Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Correlation. And we're going to put lots of different types of correlations in this playlist. Um, first, well, in this one, we're going to discuss the geometrical interpretation of Pearson's correlation coefficient. And before we do that, let's look at some not notation. So this is a data matrix. And Pearson's correlation coefficient is between two variables. But in this playlist, we're going to look at partial correlation and you know, coefficient determination and, and lots of different types. So I want to discuss it in general. So if this is a data matrix and we think of the rows as an observation, so, it's a, so this is the second observation, and, and they have P components. Now you can think of it as like this is a person, person one, person two, and each person has different traits or characteristics, and these are variables or components of that vector for an observation or for a person. So it might be their age and weight, social economic status, marital status, you know, these, these are different variables for each person or each observation. So now if we look at it this way, so x1, and that's a vector sign, so that's a vector of ages. So it, it could be thought of as a random sample of ages in the same way here. So the sample from the second variable, you know, so this is a random sample of, say, weight you know, for each subject or each observation. And it doesn't have to be height and weight. It could be whatever component you want to collect. And what we want to do is correlation is between any two of these variables, Pearson's correlation, okay? So here's the coefficient. It's, we're going to call it Rij, where we're going to look at the, the correlation between the ith row and the jth row. And if you look at this sum, it's K, and it's over the second component or the second index. So these are held fixed, which is like summing over a row, and the same way here. Now these xi bars is the mean of that ith component, the mean of the jth component. And if we were to multiply this times one, so one over n minus one divided by 1 over n minus 1. Those n minus 1's go in here, and these are just the sample variances for the ith component, sample variance for the jth component, and this would be the sample covariance for the, between the i and the j component, or variables, you know. Uh, so our ij is the correlation between variables i and j. And we want to give a geometrical interpretation of this. Now, a little background first. Um, in a video that I called Projection Matrices Inter Introduction, we looked at if we had any two vectors, say x1 and x2, and we dot product or you know matrix multiplied and divided by the uh, length of each vector, that is equal to the cosine of theta, which where theta is the angle between these two vectors. So if if these vectors are living in space. And, they're, and pick two of them, they're dangling in space, and you can create an angle between those vectors. Well, the cosine of that angle is equal to this. And again, we prove it in this video. And next, we're going to, uh, the, there's a perpendicular projection matrix onto the one. This is in that same video I was talking about, projection matrix's introduction is we develop this matrix J, which is, a, this is a vector of all ones, it's an N vector of all ones, and so that's, and we multiply it like this. So actually this times that, you get N inverse, so it's one over N, which can be brought out, and this matrix multiplication creates a matrix of all ones, N by N matrix of all ones, and then you divide by N minus one. So it's actually a matrix a constant matrix of 1 over n, but it's a perpendicular projection matrix onto the vector 1. And so if you pre, if you take any vector in n-space and pre-multiply it times j, it projects it onto this one vector. So every component is the same. Okay, so j is an n by n constant matrix of 1 over n. 
So if we look at this, so if we take any vector in n-space, pre-multiply it, it's going to project it onto this one vector. So this is going to be an n by one vector of constants. But now let's see what it is. So this right here, it can be thought of as this, right? Because this is n, n to n versus 1 over n, bring it out, and we get this. But this piece here is the sum of the xi's. Then you take that n and divide it, we get x bar, and it's for the ith component. Well, this constant is multiplied times every every uh, component here, uh, you know, and it's a vector n by one vector of ones. So this is a constant vector of x i bar in each component. So if we pre-multiply an n vector by j, it projects it onto this one vector. It has constants of x i bar. So now, if we take two vectors, xi and xj. So these are vectors that live in in space. So those are vectors, not the mean. They live in in space um, where, you know, the xij is a vector. Then these two vectors, so say this is xi and this is xj in in space. So you can't really draw it. So imagine it abstractly. And then somewhere there's a vector, that an n by 1 vector, where each component is 1. So that's the 1 vector. Think of it like this. Now, if we pre-multiply this xi vector times j, it projects it onto this 1 vector. So this is j xi. And the same way here. So if we pre-multiply xj, times capital J, it projects it onto this one vector. So that is it. Now this vector is actually the difference between those two. And this vector is the difference between those two. And you can kind of think of it, if we take this vector, which is J X I, and add it to this vector, which is X I minus J X I, the J X I's cancel, leaving just X I. So that's what this is. Now, if we take these vectors here and just move them over here and then put the, the starting at, at 0, 0, so this vector gets moved to here, right? This vector gets moved to here, and then this angle we call theta. Well, by property number 1, we know the cosine of theta is equal to this. So it's this vector multiplied by this vector. And then divided by the square root, you know, of the, of the, uh, divided by the lengths of these vectors. Okay, that's, and that's what we proved in that perpendicular projection matrix introduction video. But each of these, so like if we look at this numerator, which is here, we just bring it down. So this is a vector here, and then it's transposed, and then that is this vector. But when you multiply these out, it's component-wise multiplication which is this. And this is actually the numerator of that Pearson's correlation coefficient. And this vector multiplications end up being, you know, this, which is in the denominator of the Pearson's correlation coefficient. So, thus, the Pearson's correlation coefficient, Rij, is equal to cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between those two vectors. Uh, between these two vectors and and you know some people don't like this notation they'll write it like this where this is equal to this so this is a one vector with constants xi bar same way here so it's the angle between those two vectors all right well that's all i have for this video hopefully you enjoyed that i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye